Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake, aka Tag, and today we're going to be pushing up ladder with one of my new favorite decks. You've got so much bait potential with the skeletons, the bats, the firecracker, and the skeleton barrel. This deck really shines when you're able to bait out your opponent's small spells with the firecracker and the bats, and then they have to go for a bomb tower, a defensive structure on the skeleton barrel, and then they have nothing for the royal hogs. Whenever I play ladder, I try to play decks that genuinely don't have bad matchups, no matter how crazy your opponent's deck is. This has to be one of the best defensive decks in Clash Royale at the moment, and it is so safe for ladder. Ladder. So let's go jump straight into some ladder games and assert some dominance. And a huge shout out to one of my new favorite games, World War Do, for sponsoring today's video. If you guys somehow, some way have not downloaded it already, make sure to go to the link in the description of the video or in the pinned comment to download today for free. World War Do is unlike any other strategy game that you've played before, and it is most certainly not a Clash Royale clone. There is just so much strategy involved with how you customize your deck and move your commander around the battlefield. I have to say that my absolute favorite part of the game has to be the skins the emotes, the bubbles, the taunts, all the customization that you can do with World War Dote makes it just so unique. It's really hard to find a game like World War Dote that still has in-depth strategy and a ton of customization features. This is not a one-off video. I've been playing World War Dote for the past couple weeks and I can't wait to show you guys more in the future. If you download today using my special link in the pinned comment or in the description of the video and you push to the top three in my clan, you'll get a thousand free diamonds and you'll get an exclusive commander skin that you can't get anywhere else. There is a $25,000 esports tournament about to happen soon, so now is the perfect time to download today and start practicing. They're taking esports really seriously, everyone's starting out fresh, so right now is the best time to join in on the action and get good and make a name for yourself. All right, we got a game here. We're gonna go in for skeletons in the back and we're gonna see what's up. Oh my gosh, immediately gonna go in for the minions minor push. What are you doing, dude? You're so aggressive. You could get shut down like a firecracker. <laughs> Obviously the minions die in one hit then, so uh, what are you gonna do now, brother? What are you gonna do? Oh, you got arrows. Wow, you gotta be like that. You gotta be that guy. Yeah, he is that guy. He's got arrows and he's got zap. This is gonna be a brutal matchup. <laughs> and then of course he's got barbs and we can't kill those with firecrackers. And uh, I don't know what we're gonna do. I think that we have to outcycle the arrows because we do have a faster cycle. So maybe we can get a couple firecrackers on the map or something like that. But it is gonna be an uphill battle. So firecracker is gonna be able to demolish the barbarians before they get more than a couple hits. We're going to immediately follow up with the Skeleton Barrel. He's not going to be able to arrow everything at the same time. He's got Sparky too. What are you doing, dude? You've got Sparky. You've got Arrows. You've got Zap. I don't understand. I haven't seen a deck like this before, though. So I'm going to go in for Royal Hogs in the opposite lane, and then I'm just going to get away with Bats. He's going to go and Zap those, most likely, and then we can get a Goblin Cage down. So then uh, I can go for a Skeleton Surround on top of the Sparky to finish it off. And if the Sparky dies, then we're okay. So that's all we needed to have happen. So we've got the Goblin Cage Brawler finishing off the, the Giant. Got a ton of damage in the right hand side. And despite this man having arrows and zap, we should be able to start dominance. I'm gonna go for Firecracker. He's gonna arrow it 100%, but we will get value before he arrows it. Ooh, yep, okay. So we killed the minions, it was worth it. Three for three trade. The minions would have gotten more damage than the arrows got on my tower. So that's the way I like to look at it. Remember, he used the zap earlier on top of the bat. So he's not gonna have it for the Skeleton Barrel right now. We're gonna try to get some easy 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 damage okay great stuff we go for royal hogs and bats and left because now he used his barbs so then he doesn't have the barbs for the royal hogs and he's gonna have to zap that but i don't know how he's gonna be able to deal with the royal hogs because like in all honesty they're just getting too much value so we will out cycle his arrows because our cycle is a little bit quicker so we get more value before he uh, eventually drops it and then we can go for a royal delivery on top of the minions well good luck dude royal delivery is broken against sparky plus bait decks oh my goodness so the great thing that I can do here is I can go in for Skeleton Barrel, I can go in for Royal Hogs, and then I can go for Bats. So unfortunately, he went in for a Sparky in the left-hand lane, so it's going to be able to get value, but I think the Goblin Cage Brawler just gets on the tower, and if the Goblin Cage Brawler gets like one more hit, then we can probably just Spell Cycle him out. So here we go. All I need to do is go in for the Goblin Cage, go in for a Skeleton Barrel, so let me beat out the Zaps, so then I can get Bats down. Oh my gosh, he arrowed it, let's go. So that means he has no answer to this. I can go in for a Skeleton Barrel on offense and take out his tower while I go in for a Royal Delivery on defense. And we will walk with the W. Even if the Sparky somehow, some way, goes and targets the Goblin Cage Brawler, we are not going to take enough damage. GG, well played and peace out. Actually, that Sparky looked like it was about to splash my tower because the Goblin Cage Brawler was really close. But it didn't matter. We walked away with the win. And we would have been able to take the right-hand side really easily with the Royal Hogs Earthquake Push anyway. 
All right, we got a game here. We're going to sauce out a good luck. We're going to see what's up. He's going to go for Spear Goblin. So when I see Spear Goblins, I'm expecting it to be a Mega Knight deck, a Minor Wallbreakers deck, or a Skeleton Barrel deck. So I just want to go for Skeletons in the back. And oh, let's go. This is one of my favorite plays to do. Goblin Cage goes and pulls the Wallbreakers. Both of them isn't damaged at all. And it gives us Counterflush. So that's what I love about it. And then it's also going to go in the lane of the one bat instead of the four. <laughs> okay, looks like he's going to be running the Minor... Bomb Tower variation? Yeah, that's it. There it is. I could Earthquake, but I feel like that would be an overextension. I'm not really going to be able to break through anyway. It's fine. Remember, he just uses Bomb Tower, though, so we can go in for a Skeleton Barrel here. We can get some nice damage. He's probably going to start going in for Miners, and we'll go for Skeletons on that. Generally want to go in the same lane if I can get Counter Push, if he doesn't have Poison, but I think he's got Poison, so we want to go opposite lane in this situation then. So we're going to go for Firecracker here, so then he can't Poison the Tower that he wants. And we'll see what he does. I mean, he's just going to go wall breakers, right? Then we go for Goblin Cage. Yep. All right. Exactly as we thought, right? I planned it, man. I knew that he was going to do it. So we're going to go in for this, the uh, the Royal Hogs and the Bats. And we're going to Royal Delivery right on top of his Bats. So then he has no answer to the Bats, guys. If these Bats break through and get on the tower, that's going to be at least like 600 damage extra. Oh my gosh, man. Before the Death Bomb expired, he just took a ton. And he went in for his log. So you know what we do? We go for our skeleton barrel. We punish him for that. It's gonna hurt a little bit. You can't do that, brother. I know that you love ladder and I know that you love playing aggressive, but you can't do that. And now he's poisoning, so he doesn't have an answer to the firecracker. Also, if you guys noticed before, I passively cycle my skeletons on the right-hand side because I predicted him to go for the miner, then the royal delivery to shut down the bats. So overall, really good trade for us. So he dropped five elixir, we dropped four, we countered it, and then we also got so much damage on the left. So I'm gonna do the exact same shenanigans with the goblin cage. So then the Spear Goblins lock onto that. And then I'm going to go in for Skeletons on top of the Miner. So yes, you can go in for the Bomb Tower, but I can just go Earthquake this time. And then the Royal Hogs continue to get chip damage on the tower. Let's go, man. This is just going so well for me. Go for another Skeleton Barrel. I can go for Bats immediately after. And at this point of the game, I feel like we've won. Because he's constantly having to play defense. And he's not able to go in for Wall Breakers because we've got Goblin Cage. If you guys are sick and tired of losing against Wall Breakers decks... Just run Goblin Cage. It's impossible to lose then. You just can't lose. Losing is against my religion with this matchup. So we can go for another Earthquake. We will be able to shut down any Bomb Tower that he drops. I don't even know if he wants to. These bats are just going to die to the Firecracker. We can go in for a Skeleton Barrel in the opposite lane with our own bats. Because now he only has like Log Poison to deal with it. Oh man, it's so difficult. Yeah, he's the Poison it. Oh my gosh. That means he's uh, got all of his offensive potential precluded yet again. Because he's got no poison with the miners. Then he can't kill the skeletons. He can't kill the firecracker. He can't kill the bats. And that was a decisive 1-0 victory. Look at our lowest HP tower. 2,100. His highest HP tower. 1,587. Feels bad, man. Hey, we're currently 3,760. We're going to keep pushing up and see how high we can get. So we're going to go for bats in the background to see what's up. We're going to see what's happening. And this guy is not psychoing anything. Then he goes in for a baby dragon. So when I see baby dragon... I'm expecting it to probably be a Golem or a Graveyard deck or something along those lines. Okay, he's going to have Dark Prince. This is going to be a tough one, guys. We see Baby Dragon, Dark Prince, Elixir Golem. Let's go. Let's get fired up. So I want to go for Cage here. I want to be able to destroy his Baby Dragon, kill his Dark Prince. And he's going to go for an Earthquake, too. The aggressive nature of these players. Too aggressive. The Elixir Golem players, they're all just insane. He tornadoed too! Wait, does he understand the ramifications of doing that? Do you understand the consequences that are about to happen to you? We can go in for a skeleton barrel on the right hand side, and he doesn't have bar barrel, he doesn't have tornado. He must be a very sad panda, guys. That's gonna be a ton of damage for free. I can go in for a rail delivery right off. Yeah, I said ton of damage. That's kind of an understatement, guys. Look at his tower. Less than half HP. So now we can pick our poison. Whichever tower we want, we can take it. So I can go for a firecracker here. I can go for bats. It's probably a tornado it or something to kill the firecracker and the bats at the same time. We're going to go for skeletons here. And then we can go for skeleton barrels. We want to just keep up the aggression. So the firecracker and the skeleton barrel are going to bait out elixir. And maybe he just sacks that and eats a ton of damage and then tries to elixir golem me. I would not be surprised if he did that. That's what a typical elixir golem player would do. Yeah, there we go. That's what we like to see. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go in for a Royal Delivery Service. So then his Electro Dragon doesn't hit anything. He goes in for an Elixir Colm. And his Elixir Colm is just left alone, man. It's Home Alone 5. I don't know what's happening for him. But he uh, 
Just doesn't have any comrades, no friends. He's just chilling there. And he's social distancing away from everything. So it looks like I want to just go for a firecracker here. Or you know what? Yeah, I want to just go in for firecracker. You cycle it early so I can get back to another one. That's also really important on defense. I like cycling my firecrackers really early on. So I consistently get back to as many as possible. That's how your defenses work with this deck, at least. I need to take the tower, so I'm going to go in for a skeleton barrel. And we'll keep our firecracker alive. Oh my gosh, it's going to go and hit the dragons. That's broken, man. Now we can go for another delivery. We can go for a secondary cage. And if we just keep pulling everything, I think we, we pull off the W then too, right? So we're going to go for skeletons to go and pull his dark prince. Look at the yellow brick road, guys, that he followed. <laughs> That defense is absolutely disgusting. Also, the Royal Hog should be placed one more tile uh, further. So like right here, opposed to right there. So then all the Royal Hogs go towards the left-hand tower, opposed to only one of them going towards the King Tower. So yeah, we're going to win this game. We take a commanding 2-0 victory. We pulled him all over the map. He was bamboozled. He didn't know what he was even getting into. And... We asserted dominance against Sneaky, the Elixir Golem player. There's something so satisfying about destroying Elixir Golem players when they spam everything at the river. I think that's partially one of the reasons why I love Clash Royale so much, that I have the opportunity to destroy skillless decks like that one. We're Cycle Skeletons at the back. We're going to see what's up. We're going to see what's happening. And this guy's going to go for a giant. So we're just going to go off his lane with our Royal Hogs and we're rushing right through. Ooh, you're going to go for a Zap so that the mini packet kills all the Royal Hogs in one hit? I actually like that play on his end. I like it a lot. I mean, I don't like it for me, but I like it for him. So I'm going to go for a Bats to finish off the Mini P.E.K.K.A. And then we can go in for a Goblin Cage. As long as he doesn't have Snowball plus Zap, we're 100% chilling. And that does not get a hit. So I'm going to go for the Goblin Cage last passable second. I didn't know if he was going to spam us really aggressively, so I wanted to wait. And we're in a really good spot, guys. So Goblin Cage Brawler is going to deny all but, like, one hit, I believe. And then we can go for Skeletons on top of the Archers. Wow, this is going so... Wait, it didn't even get a single hit. What the heck, man? I guess if you place the Goblin Cage at the best possible timing with the exact placement that we did, you can stop the giant from getting a single hit. The more you know in Clash Royale, guys. Another Sparky player, though. Wow. It's a lot of Sparky players these days, eh? So I want to go for Royal Delivery so then the Firecracker doesn't get annihilated. And he's going to go in for arrows. Really well played, but still, man. Even a few arrows on top of the Firecracker and the Royal Delivery, you still can't finish it off with another Sparky hit. So it's great stuff for us. Oh my gosh. Wait. Could he zap? He could. Yeah. I figured he was going to zap, so I need to go in for the Goblin Cage a little bit earlier. So this is Sparky Balloon with Giant. My goodness, dude. So I wonder if that gets a hit. I think it does, yeah. Ouch. Unfortunate, because he went for the zap. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't believe that, guys. Anyway, we can go for Skeleton to shut down the mini pack. He's not going to have an answer to that. And then we can go in for Royal Hogs in the right, because he's going to be down a lot of Elixir. So it looks like I'm probably going to take the left-hand tower. I want to go in for the Royal Hogs when he doesn't have enough Elixir for the Sparky. So then we can consistently get damage. I said consistently. That's going to be a meme. What did he just say? But I meant to say consistently. And you guys know what I meant. You guys pick up what I put down. Hopefully, at least. I'm going to go for a Firecracker here. Definitely want to go in for a Goblin Cage. And then go in for Bats. I was like, wait. If I go in for Bats too early, I could just get arrowed. He's going to zap, though. I want to go in for a... Royal Delivery to push that back. If the timing was a little bit quicker, slightly, like one millisecond earlier, I think that we wouldn't have even taken the hit on the uh, delivery service for a while. So that would have been nice. You want to make sure that you disrupt the balloon's animation, and we didn't do that there. Okay, so looks like I'm going to lose the tower, so I'm not going to forfeit a Goblin Cage when I need it on defense against the balloon. So what am I going to do? I'm going to decide to go in for a delivery here to make sure the mini packer can't three crowd me, and then we're going to go in for Royal Hogs. So he's going to probably go for a zap, and then he's not going to have a great answer to the Royal Hogs. We're also going to Earthquake here. And he did a lot of damage towards the three, so I'm a bit scared on that end. I think I need to go for bats early on. I think I need to. Uh, not something that I want to do. And then I want to go for Firecracker and keep up the aggression so then I can go for Royal Hogs in the middle. So if I'm able to do that, I might be able to win the game. I'm going to go for Skeleton Barrel, then I'm going to go... Oh, okay, wait. We can just go for Cage, and then we can get a Royal Hogs in the middle, and I think we're fine. As long as we're going to be able to kill the Balloon, we're fine. So we're going to push it back. He's not going to be able to get anything but death damage. And he won't be able to finish this off with spells immediately before we get the Earthquake and the Royal Hogs. Come on. Come on, Royal Hogs. Give me a little bit more to love. Let's go. Whew, that was a bit scary, guys. I'm not going to lie. If he had like a random fireball or rocket in the deck, I would have just lost. And who knows? The guy had giant Sparky plus Balloon. I feel like he kept all of his cards, though, so he couldn't have any room or room. That was a pretty intense and crazy game, though. I'm glad to win that. <laughs> 
Hey, we got a game against Gabriel. What's up, dude? I'm going to sauce out a good luck. We're going to go for skeletons in the back in the same lane as the bandit. And maybe he's got Pekka, bridge spam, and he's going to zap the skeletons. We'll have to wait and see. Because I'd have to goblin cage immediately if that's going to be the case. You know what? I'm going to go royal hogs because I don't trust them. I really don't trust them at all. We can go for bats on top of the magic archer too. And we're just going to plow through the magic archer. Have our own Walmart magic archer with a firecracker. Get chip damage on the Pekka. And we couldn't have asked for a better start than that, guys. That's amazing. That's what I like to see. You know what I want to do is I want to go in for a Royal Delivery. I want to go for Skeletons here. I want to be able to knock back the Electro Wizard, keep our Firecracker healthy, force more Elixir out of our opponent, and make them a sad panda. So he's going to go in for a Royal Recruit counter, and it's still going to give us value, though. You know what I can do? I can go for Royal Hogs. Let's go and pull back his Royal, uh, Royal Ghost. There's so many Royals in Clash Royale right now, guys. It's just like screwing up my names. Wow, there's so many of you. I can't deal with it anymore. Anyway, I want to go in for bats and I want to go for cage. So then the bandit has to walk. He doesn't have zap and cycle. So the cage plus bats counter push is going to be pretty annoying for him. And we'll see what he does. I mean, if he goes in for a battle ram opposite lane, we've got royal delivery. So you're not going to get damage. You might have to peck on top of this because you don't have bandit. You don't have... Okay, you're going to go in for the, uh, the pencil, of course. So yeah, we just want to go for royal delivery. Shut that down, as I said before. Go in for our skeletons and make sure he doesn't get an ounce of damage. So he's gonna Magic Archer. So when we see that, I definitely wanna go for a Skeleton Barrel on the right, force out more Elixir. And I think he's probably gonna have to go for a Pekka on the left if he wants to get any damage. No, he's gonna go for Royal Ghost. Well played, well played. So I can Firecracker here, I can go for Bats. And I think we wanna go for Cage in the middle. If I can afford it in time. Ah, oh, that would've been so clean. If I was able to stop the Bandit guys, that would've been amazing. But we're gonna be able to pull the Magic Archer. Magic Archer is just going to get finished off by Skeletons last possible second. We drop it after the Magic Archer locks on, so it's not able to kill the Skellies. And the Firecracker is going to lock onto the tower here. He's going to go for Pekka to activate King. Okay, okay. I see how it is, my dude. We'll go for a Skeleton Barrel here. I could go for an Earthquake if I want to go and get some more chip, but I'd much rather just go in for a Delivery Service, guys. Knock everything back and get a Cage down. So Cage is definitely the best play whenever your person goes in for the Pencil. And other than that, guys, we kind of want to hold it. Uh, and use skeletons on top of the bandit, use firecracker on the P.E.K.K.A. And then we're going to be able to defend the Royal Ghost or the bandit or whatever he spams with us uh, with the Royal Delivery Service. Royal Delivery is so good when he has so many units stacked up. And then we can go for a skeleton barrel, force out a zap, so then if he spams in the opposite lane, he won't have it for the bats. Okay, that's clean. I can Earthquake for some chip damage right now, just so that we can force out more Elixir. I'm going to go for bats because he just used the zap. Bandit's going to die, but it might actually get a uh, bit of chip damage on us in time. And all I have to do is go in for Royal Hogs, go in for an Earthquake, and walk away with a win. So GG, well played, and peace out, brother. Pleasure playing against you in Asserting Dominance. So obviously he's not going to be very happy about this, but, you know, Pekka Bridge Spam, it's an extremely difficult deck to play in the meta, and that's one of the reasons I don't play it anymore, at least on ladder. You can't break through anyone that's decent with Royal Hogs because they're just going to have Goblin Cage, they're going to have Firecracker, they're going to have Royal Delivery Service to bounce back all your bridge spam, and it feels like you're just bashing your head into a wall. Hey, we're 2,744. That's what I like to see, guys. Let's get it.